JMC 6000 here in the JMC Garage for this week's JMC Garage Talk. And in this video, we are talking about three cylinders. That's right. This one in particular is out of the 2024 Bronco Sport. This is the current three cylinder, the 1.5 liter turbocharged Dragon inline three with has direct and port injection uh this particular engine we're going to dive into just a little bit but what i kind of wanted to go over and the reason why this is in the garage because i've been wanting to focus on this video for a while and a lot of people have questions about three cylinders now let me kind of break it down there's about four manufacturers at least here in the u.s that offer an inline three in vehicles all of them are turbocharged. None of them are naturally aspirated. We haven't had a naturally aspirated three-cylinder sold in the U.S. since the dawn of the Suzuki Swift slash Geo Metro, where they offered a one-liter, I think it was a one-liter, it was a one-liter inline three throttle body fuel injected that produced all the 55 horsepower. Oh, man, that was a laughable three-cylinder. But it got the job done because they were, on, they were in cars that I think weighed close to 2,000 pounds, if not a little bit under 2,000 pounds. They were in super light vehicles. Usually they had a four- or five-speed manual. So they actually got around pretty decent, and they got phenomenal fuel mileage because it was a small three-cylinder, only throttle body, inje throttle body injected. Uh, but anyway, since then, a lot of people had a bad distaste for a three-cylinder because... That three-cylinder was so underpowered, and a lot of people are like, well, how you can't really get power with three-cylinder. Well, there's companies like Ford and others that kind of change that. And what I wanted to go over in this video is what it's like to have a modern-day three-cylinder and kind of go over the different ones that we have, some of their cons, some of their pros, and is it really worth getting a vehicle with an inline three today? Because there's several vehicles offered with an inline three, and then some manufacturers have more than just one three-cylinder. For example, Ford has two different versions of the 1.5 currently. Uh, Chevy has two different versions of their three-cylinder, 1.2 and a 1.3, well, GM for that matter, because it's more than just in the Chevy tracks. We have the Chevy Trailblazer, the Buick and Vista, the Buick, um, oh, I forget, Encore, the Encore, I don't think it's the Encore GX, but in the Encore. So there's several different versions of of uh, three cylinders, uh, even Nissan has a three cylinder now. So let's kind of go through each and every one. Let me kind of list you my pros and my cons regarding three cylinders. And it's not just this, this particular three cylinder, but I think it's in three cylinders in general. And then we'll kind of go over and briefly go over each and every one that I just listed. So number one, let's go over my cons. Number one seems like a characteristic of all three cylinders. I don't care if it's Nissan. I don't care if it's even Toyota, which has their three cylinder GR Corolla. I don't care what it is. All three cylinders have a natural characteristic of being vibration at idle or being very jittery at idle. I, I don't know what it is. And the lower the idle, the, the more vibration you feel. Uh, one in particular that I'm thinking of, the Nissan with their 1.5 VC turbo three cylinder. At first, when you get that engine, it's very smooth. Even though I don't know, you can barely feel anything. It's a very smooth engine. But it seems like as miles go on top of that three cylinder, when it starts climbing up to 30, 40, even 50,000 miles, they get very shaky, almost like the engine's literally coming apart. Uh, I, I, I've been impressed with that three cylinder, but I don't know about the longevity about Nissan's 1.5 VC turbo. It seems like the more miles I put on that engine, the more vibration it gathers. And by like 40 or 50,000 miles, and I've been in the, the Nissan uh, Rogue with that three cylinder in it with 40 and 50,000 miles, and this is. They don't feel good at all. That idle, they feel they shake the whole car. Whereas when they're brand new, they don't do that. But man, when they get the miles on there, it feels like the thing is going to literally fall and rattle apart. That's how bad they're getting. So anyway, let's talk about uh, another con of three cylinders besides the vibration at idle. Uh, another con of three cylinders is just a lack of power. Now, granted, this particular one in the Ford Escape is a Dragon three-cylinder. It produces 180 horsepower, upwards of 185 or so pound-feet of torque. It has decent power, but one of the characteristics I've known and that I've seen with this three-cylinder and others is they have no top end, and that's kind of typical of a turbocharged engine. They have some decent bottom. They have really good mid-range, but they have absolutely no top end at all. They, 
you, when you rev them out, nothing happens. There's nobody home until it shifts. And I don't know, that's most common that I've seen with three cylinder engines so far is they don't really have a lot of top end to them. And then the final con that I see with a lot of these inline three cylinders is the fact that not only do we have not much power up top, the jitteriness and the vibration at idle, but it's the sound. Now, some people love the sound of a three cylinder. I personally think they sound whiny. I think they sound horrible. I think some of them even sound like complete garbage. Uh, but uh, some people love the sound of a three cylinder. I, I'm not a big fan of the sound of the three cylinder. Um, I, I rather watch have a inline four for sound. But uh, some people like the sound of a three cylinder. I, I don't know why. They say it sounds like half a V6. It doesn't even sound close to a V6. I don't care which one you grab. They don't sound like a V6. They're never going to sound like a V6. They don't have the same firing order, even if you remove the V6 three cylinders. That, anyway, but that's just me. So let's go over some positives about the inline three. Uh, number one has to be the tight packaging. Um, you can't really see it in this thing, but if you were to take away some of the hoses and some of the extras that we see in here, you would see that the engine is about this big and it's about this wide. So it's not very big and it's not very you know long and it's not very wide. It's very tight packaging for most three cylinders. And that goes the same for the Nissan. That goes the same for the Chevy. That goes the same for, for all of them. Um, and then another thing I wanted to make mention of three cylinders is not only the tight packaging, but also has to be some of them get pretty good fuel economy. Not all of them, but some of them are actually pretty efficient. I mean, in this Bronco Sport, you can get up to 30 miles per gallon on the highway. Pretty efficient for what they are. Um, and then lastly, what I say about the three cylinders is um, it doesn't seem to matter what you run them on. You can run them on 87. You can run them on 91. It, they just seem to just, you know, just want to run on whatever you put them in. It doesn't matter. So uh, they're pretty versatile. And I do like that about the three cylinders. But other than that, um, there is one other con I want to make mention. But that's kind of a bonus thing. But let's go through... What time are we at, son? Uh, seven. All right, we got a couple more minutes. Let's go through each and every brand that is offering a three-cylinder in the U.S., in the States today. Let's go over, go from top to bottom. How's that sound? Number one, we have Toyota with the GR Corolla. Um, I think in other countries, there's a GR Yaris. Anyway, they're offering this 1.5 liter three-cylinder. 1.5 seems to be the magic number one and a half liter, three cylinders. Anyway, look, it puts up close to 300, if not a little bit over 300 horsepower out of a 1.5 and it's three cylinders are close to 300 horsepower. Very phenomenal engine. Toyota poured a lot of R&D into that engine. From what I understand, out of three cylinders and out of all the three cylinders that are offered today, that's probably one of the smoothest out there. And it's definitely one of the most powerful out there. I've had or heard of some cases where you know, cases where somebody goes down the road and the thing blows up on them, big fire and everything else. Uh, Toyota denied warranty on that one particular case. But anyway, for the most part, they seem like a decent three-cylinder for what they are. And they sound okay. I mean, it's still a three-cylinder. I don't think they sound the best. But that one, I would say, sounds okay. It's probably one of one of the most decent three-cylinders. I've seen them apart before. It actually is built pretty pretty well. Second, we're going to go down the list. Second is going to be Ford. And the reason why I put Ford second is because they offer two different types of the 1.5 liter. Now, we're not going to talk about the one liter. That is a pure debacle by Ford of Europe. They designed that engine. They propped it over here into the U.S. And you may be like, well, Ford's Ford. Yeah, I get it. But Ford of Europe seems to be like a different animal than Ford of U.S. Anyway, they did the wet timing belt and, and everything else. And Shard did the time belt get flaked off and, and they just cause a big old mess uh, because the time belt's bathed in oil. But there's another company that's doing that, which is close to the bottom of the list. I'll go ahead and go through them. But despite the one liter, which is no longer being made, let's jump into the 1.5, the Dragon and the 1.5 MPC. You may be like, are there two different 1.5s? Yes. We have in this Bronco Sport, the 1.5 Dragon three cylinder, which uses a timing chain uses direct and port injection and has a small turbo on the back so far the only downside to this engine besides lack of a top end has been it's very jittery very even though it has a balance shaft it vibrates at idle 
and it absolutely annoys me. And it's worse when you put the air conditioning on. Okay, but besides that, it's actually a pretty reliable three cylinder. There has been many issues. There was a recall for the fuel injectors leaking fuel. Ford has since taken care of that. Um, this does, on the other hand, this particular three cylinder does use a wet belt, not for the timing, but for the oil drive belt. Something to think about, this engine does use an oil drive belt to drive the oil pump, but the cams on top here are driven by a chain, which is right behind this cover, and uh, there is a balance shaft to help smooth out some of the inherent vibrations of the three-cylinder. Now, their other three-cylinder is a 1.5 liter MPC, mod modular power cylinder in line three, the turbo. Anyway, that particular three-cylinder not only uses a chain for the timing system, but it also uses a chain for the oil pump as well. It's actually a better built three-cylinder. It's smoother. It's quieter. Power, though, it's like this one. It doesn't have much top end, but mid-range and, and low-range, it's, it's very good in that three-cylinder. So that's why I put Ford in second, especially because that 1.5 MPC is a much better three-cylinder. It's going into the 25 Bronco Sport. It's been in the Escape since... 2023. All right, now let's move on down. GM, which offers their three cylinder in the Chevy Trax, the Chevy Trailblazer, the Buick and Vista, the Buick and Vision, uh, the, some other Buick models. Uh, they offer a 1.2 and a 1.3. Uh, the highest of the horsepower, the 1.3, goes up to 155. My issue with that three cylinder in the General Motors products is that it uses a wet belt timing system. Just like the issues that Ford had with the one liter, I believe GM is going to have some of the same issues in the 1.2 and 1.3. So I would kind of stay away from the GM three cylinders. We don't know longevity of those engines yet. And I haven't seen too much on them, but I don't think they're going to last very much. And the recommendation from GM is to replace that wet belt at 150,000. I don't think they're only going to make 100,000 uh, for miles before that wet belt starts coming apart. But that's just me. You heard it from me first. Be careful. I know the Chevy track looks enticing. The, the smaller Buick looks enticing because of the price. But they are running a wet belt timing system in that engine. So I'm going to be a little bit leery of that particular uh, GM three cylinders. And then finally, on the bottom of the list, and even though I really do like this engine, I do. It is Nissan's VC Turbo. I've seen this engine apart. Please visit um i fix cars or i do cars eric that tears apart motors he uploads a, a new teardown every single saturday afternoon um i do cars he tore apart one of the vc turbo three cylinders it's a unique design very intricate design but at the same time i'm, I'm questioning the longevity of the 1.5 vc turbo in the nissan i mean it's impressive out of the gate it's nice it's smooth but man, over time, the engine gets more, it gets more unstable. I don't know how else to put it. It gets more jittery. It gets more unstable. There's more vibration. It, it just doesn't make any sense to me. I remember, and I work for Avis Budget. I go through a ton of rental cars every single day. And I remember a customer brought in a Nissan Rogue. They were bringing it back to, you know, because he just rented it. I looked on the miles and it had like 43 or 45,000 miles. I started the thing up. And I kid you not, the steering wheel was shaking at idle. There was no check engine lights on or anything like that, but the whole thing was shaking. And I'm like, man, I don't remember. And I looked underneath the hood, and sure enough, it had the 1.5 BC turbo. I'm like, this is, like, not good. But, I mean, that seems to be, and it, that wasn't the first one I ran into. I ran into other Nissan Rogues with that 1.5 BC turbo that seemed to get progressively more agitated, more vibration more noise as age becomes on those engines and miles so anyway that's my whole rundown of i3 or inline three turbocharged engine should you buy one in your next vehicle or should you just skip it all together and get a turbo four or an inline four and actually that's right now for me it depends on the engine i think toyota's engine is pretty awesome i think uh ford's this dragon three cylinder is okay I don't like how unsmooth it is. It can be a little jittery and jarring at times. But I think uh, the one in the 23, 24, and 25 Escape is a good three-cylinder, the MPC. And I think the, the one's going into the 25 Bronco Sport. Again, a plug for the Bronco Sport because you're going to get the updated three-cylinder. I would go for that over this particular one. 
which is a 24. And then Chevy's, I would be leery of the timing belt issue um, because it's a wet belt. And then, of course, Nissan's. Ugh, I, it just seems like the more miles those engines have on, the more problems we're going to see. Anyway, so that's my whole rundown. Like, comment, subscribe. I love to hear about your incidents. Maybe you have one of these vehicles with a turbocharged inline three and you want to comment on how it is, what longevity you have, what issues you may run into. Anyway, I want to thank Ford for sending me this Bronco Sport. And I wanted to do this breakdown review on three cylinders. Again, you guys be blessed. Have a wonderful day. And we'll catch you on the next one.